Hello friends. In this series of tutorial for the time series forecasting, we are going to discuss the LSTM network today. So LSTM is a artificial recurring neural network, the RNN1 architecture, which is a part of the deep learning method. So today we will discuss about the uh, multiple things you are relating to LSTM. First thing is that how it is differing from our legacy uh, regression models. So what you have learned till now, like ARIMA or AR or MA or ARIMA model. So how this LSTM framework or this LSTM network is differencing from that. And the second thing is like how you can predict using LSTM. So we'll discuss it, how theoretically it is done. So it is like a short term memory propagating over the train and test data. And the last thing we'll discuss, like how using the loss function, we can see that the prediction is accurate over the uh, iteration of the epochs. And then we will compare our actual test data with the predicted data with a very simple data set, which we have I have borrowed from Jason Brownlee. So he is the like mastermind in explaining this LSTM. You can go through his blog and you can learn it wonderfully. But I just make a gist of it and all credit goes to him. So let's begin. So first thing is uh, like where our legacy regression models fails. So first thing is, if your data is having too much noise, or if your data is having outliers, so then your regression model will fail. And it will fail if there is a non-linear relationship between y and x, the dependent and the independent variable. And it will fail if you have a multivariate environment. So always the time series prediction or forecasting you have done using an univariate environment. So in case of multivariate, it will fail. Now let's see how the LSTM actually works. So LSTM works like, let's say in your train data, you have like three, you know, um, incidents or like three samples, okay? And using these three samples, so let's say this is T minus three and for this one, and this is T minus two, and then it is T minus one. So based on these three uh, samples, you have predicted the current T as four. And then, it will shift the training data and it will include this predicted data into the training data. So now the training data will be two, three, and four, and then the five will be generated. So in this way, the short term memory propagate over the predicted data and it will predict further. So this is like, you can say in, in theoretical terms, so this is a sequence prediction. So this is a sequence of samples and how can you classify your sequence and how can you generate your sequence and using that sequence, how can you predict the further sequence? So that's how this is the whole fundamental of the LSTM prediction. You can check it in uh, Brownlee's blog. I will give it in the description, but this is in a short, very short way how it is. And the LSTM life cycle. So what all things you need to do to get a prediction over LSTM? So it's very simple, like you need to define the network and then you need to compile the network and then you need to fit the network and then you need to evaluate the network and make prediction. So I will describe this one by one. So now I have taken this data set, the monthly car sales data set from the Jason Brownlee's blog. And 
I read it using pandas. And this is how the data is. And you see the data varies over a very big range, right? So first thing first, we will make the month. Oh, by the way, I have described this as an univariate function, but LSTM works for the multivariate as well. So I index the month field because that is the time field for me. And then I just show you the data if the month is a time field and the cells is the like the output field what you need to predict. And now I just decompose this data set and get like what is my uh, like seasonality, what is my trend and what is my uh, residual. So th clearly this data is having a trend. You see, this is a trend and it has some seasonality because it has some uh, trough and crept. So let's proceed. So first thing to fit the LSTM, what we need to do, uh, we need to uh, erase the variance of the data because if the data varies uh, over a very long range, so it will like make the LSTM a bad prediction. LSTM will make a bad prediction. So let's uh, scale the data using the mean max scalar and first i will define the mean max scalar and i have borrowed it from the sql and pre-processing and then i just uh, split the data using the train set and the test set and then i have used the keras pre-processing time series generator okay because it actually expect, the LSTM actually expect the data in a specific shape. So what is that shape? So that means the number of input in this sequence. So you need to, what is the sequence and what you, how the sequence is generated. So it's a very important part in the time series generation. So in my example, I have shown you like one, two, three. So there is number of input is equal to three. So n input is equal to Three. So I have given here six because I just make a permutation and combination and get a like a proper number of lags or number of inputs you require to predict this car sales data accurately. So this can vary and you need to check what is your like adequate number. So, so in my case, the N input is six, like one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six samples in my trained data set and that will propagate over all the predicted data. So one by one, the predicted data will come in this input field and one by one, well, the uh, oldest lag will, erase, will be erased from this number of samples. And since I have given you the only univariate data, the number of features is equal to one. So if it is a multivariate data, this will be greater than one. And then I generate these shapes uh, from my train data and test data. I will show you how the data will look like. So let's run it. And then I just get only one data uh, like from this generated train and I'll show you how the data look like. So I, as I have told, like I just scale the data. That's why you are getting this kind of decimal numbers. But you see there are six samples in this data set. So this is the input and this is the output. So this is how the shape will be defined. So you know that sequence shape should be defined in this way. Number of input and then output and then this will be shifted here and this will be your output. That's the way. And very important, you always generate this shape because before you predict further. Let's proceed. And I just show you the entire data that how it looks like. So you see that all this data is actually regenerating this kind of output. 
and this is a like a multi-dimensional array uh, how this shape is defined so that's why i just show you how it is so uh, i have used the uh, like most simple lstm framework like the vanilla rn uh, the how can you say that it is vanilla because it's like a very simple and i have used the hyperbolic time function using many for my activation function and this is the output dimension so this is the output dimension and this is the activation function so i have defined the hyperbolic tangent and this is my input shape number of input and number of features to be predicted then this is how your model is defined using this add and compile and then i fit my the training data for this particular epoch so i have defined here 300 epochs so how i got this number 300 because you need to check the loss function and if your loss function reaches like a number like 0 0.001 then you can say this is properly diminished and it has a problem of like exploding the loss function as well so you need to avoid that so you need to always have the loss function diminish towards like zero very near to zero like 0 0.001 let's see how my loss function once i okay i have not run it so i have used these three things the from keras model i have used the sequential and uh, from keras layer i have used the dense and i have imported the lstm framework as well so now your data is fitting over 300 epochs so it will take time i will just skip it to the end result and you see your loss function value is diminishing so it is now 0 0.01 so it started from the 0 0.05 you can say almost like you know, five percent and you need to reach till a uh, point one percent kind of thing like 0 0.001 so initially I started with 50 epochs and then i say that in 50 epochs that is not diminished uh, properly so that's why I increase the number and I get like where it is diminished properly. You can also put a graph uh, to get this kind of loss function plot so that you can easily check whether it is diminished to, towards zero or not. But be, uh, better than graph, you can check it easily using this loss function value it generates. So now see, you see that uh, this loss value is like diminished to very near to zero. So it is like or in every case, it is uh, near to 0 0.001 or less than that. So let's proceed with uh, this uh, fitted data and let's check our prediction. So to predict it, so you see uh, what I have explained that whatever prediction you have done, so that will be included for the next prediction. That's how it is actually taking care of that nonlinear relationship, right? Like your test data is also part of your trend data or, or your predicted data is also part of your trend data if you proceed further. So that is like a sequence uh, creation, sequence generation and sequence prediction. So how it is done so first thing is that i have used this fitted model and i have created the current prediction and then i appended this prediction in my predicted data so that i can plot it and i can compare it with my test data and then i remove the like the oldest lag 
from my current batch so you say that you can say that the you know the dynamic training data is having some like a current batch so this is the like a, um, uh, the batch i have generated and this is my first batch like with a number of inputs like the last six input of my training data so training data sorry i just used my mouse and it will have like last six value so if it is like six it will be five it will be four three two one okay and this is the last six value of my training data and i have removed everything else and then this is my first batch and how that first batch is reshaped in the same way like number of inputs and number of features and then i proceed and take it from one like i just remove one and if i have predicted seven so that will be included in these steps so i just removed it first and then i added this current prediction with my current batch and then make this as my current batch so this is how it is so this is a very important steps you just need to generate this sequence and you need to reshape this sequence so this is very important steps and then once you predicted all the data you can like a plot it as it is or you can uh, rescale it to your old actual value because you just use a scalar value right so scaled value you can retransform it to your old value non scale value and you can plot and compare it with my test data so i have just check that as well you can use the like mean squared error as well so you see this is almost uh, like implying that test data so the prediction is good you can check it using the msc score as well so that is how it is and for the loss function i have used the msc here you can check so this is how you can use the lstm network to predict the time series data and it is far better than the regression model in case of nonlinear relationship or if you have like the noise or outliers or if you have the multivariate environment thank you so much please stay tuned for more videos in this series thank you so much